Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is Stiletto coming at you from the wild, wild west with my co-host, Juno, here. Trying to take over the show straight from the beginning now. Okay, kiddo. Okay. Ready to get this party started? This is Roll Series. This is the Roll Series video, part number five. Part number five we're getting ready to do. Ready to do number five? What's number five? Hmm, what's in here? I think it's Voyagers. Voyagers and Counterpoints. Okay, kiddo. Let's get down. Voyagers and Counterpoints. Let's get this party started. Let me see, which role do we want to do first? Let's do this one first. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing good out there in YouTube lane. These are some of my first favorites from Cold Steel, were the Voyagers. The very first favorites were the Tie Lights. Then after Tie Lights, I liked the Voyagers. And my very first Voyager was this one. This was the very first Triad folder for me. The very first. Absolutely love it. Oz 8. Oz 8. This one's been used and abused and beaten up. It's probably, been, this one might be the, the one that's got carried the most. Because this was before I started doing videos and before I started collecting a lot of cold steels. Because when I got this one, this was the very first one. I didn't have any other, any other cold steels besides, the only other cold steels I had at this time were tie lights. Tie lights and I had a set of Archangels, Archangel Ballast Songs, but I later sold those. But I had a set of um, Titanium and what, what was the steel? I think it was Carbon V. Carbon V uh, Archangels. But this was the very first one. I had another one, but the other one got confiscated. Because you, you know me, I always buy two. I bought two of these, but the, but the other one got confiscated. And this was meant to be the collector, but it ended up being the user. And the other one got confiscated pretty much when it was new. So this one has pretty much been the one that I really carried. The other one didn't get carried half, you know, not even a tenth as much as this one. This one's been everywhere. This was my daily carry knife. The Tie Light 6 I used to carry when I used to ride motorcycles with, with, my, with, my, with the people I used to ride with. Now, that's why I used to carry the Tie Light 6 all the time, the big knife. But for my everyday knife, this was my everyday knife. This is the one I carried every day for, I don't know how many years, for a long time. And when I say a long time, I'm saying, you know, because for me, a long time is a year. <laughs> but uh, I carried this one for about, until the, until the, the um, until the, re, uh, until the, I think until the Recon 1s, because when the Recon 1s came out, I liked them. Uh, I hate to say it, but I like I like the I like the G10. But I started carrying the Recon ones, and you guys have seen the ones I the ones I carried first, the, the polished out ones. But before the Recon ones was this. I've always liked the Voyagers, this generation, the first generation of Voyagers. I have a collection of those too, but I collected those after I had this. I collected those when they were like um, when all the stores were trying to clear them out. Because when this one first came out, this was a hot ticket right here. It was a first triad, and all the other ones were they still the stores were still stocked with all the old models, the versions before this one, and I bought them all brand new. I bought them all brand new on sale for dirt cheap when the stores were try just trying to get rid of them and close them out, and they were replacing them with the triad folders. And I never carried those. So I, I might carry one or two. I think I carried the um, Vaquero that I had, my old Vaquero. That's one of those. The small Vaquero I used to carry is an EDC knife. But I absolutely love this one. That's, that's why I'm giving this one a lot of time, people, because this is the very first one. It deserves to have some time, some, some respect. All right, so let's set these aside. Let's start pulling them out. 
But all I got to say is that Voyagers, the Voyager series from Cold Steel, to me is like classic Cold Steel triad folders. I hope they never finish. I hope they never stop making the, the Voyager series, because this is this is a this is the OG. Because before these were were another set of Voyagers. I'm gonna show you, and all the Voyagers were always about being lightweight and super strong. They're not about being a big heavy duty four max type knife. They're about being a lightweight super strong knife. Same thing with the Recons. The Recons about being light. Same thing with the Tau Wars. About being lightweight and super strong. That's the way Cold Steel used to make all their knives. They used to make them. This one, this model right here, these models had um, heat treated aluminum liners with a with a grivery um, scale over the aluminum liners. He made them super strong. The XL, they they in the old days they demonstrated it holding 450 pounds. And without any damage at all. That's just what they stopped at because that Coles, uh, Andrew Demko used to always pit them up against other knives. And then you go a little bit over whatever the other knife filled at just to show that the triad folder can hold a lot more. <clears throat> Absolutely love it. Okay, I spent too much time on that. Next up. Another Oz 8 one. This one I got to collect after the other one got confiscated. I started using this one. I always get another one to collect because I always like to have the backup of knives I really, really, really like. And these are knives I really, really, really like. This one right here is a CTS BD1 when the CTS BD1s came out. This one right here is Oz 8, Oz 8. CTS BD1. As y'all know, the Tonto blades are my favorite, so I always got more Tonto blades than anything else. Because those are the Tonto blade ones are are the ones I actually carry. The other bl blades are the ones I'll just collect. This is a Vicaro. I'm gonna put this over here with the. Um, let's see. Let's do the. I'm gonna try, try to keep all the the Oz 8s together. This is what this was one of the first ones I ever purchased too. I, I never used it. It's just a collector. It's a Vicaro, large Vicaro. I don't think they make that model anymore. They used to make it for a long time, and then I think that's one of the ones that got discontinued. Um, this is the new blade type. I call it the Brong blade, but they call it the drop point. My XL Brong is with Lucky. So that one won't be in this, this, this uh, video. So this is a new blade, so let me see. This one's Oz 10, so this one should go over here. Because it's Oz 8, BD1, Oz 10. Okay, now we're getting the XLs. But before we get into the XLs, I got one more that I want to show you. I just want to show you how I got. This goes with me every day to work. This is how I carry my wallet and my other stuff that I carry inside my pouch. Because I don't like to carry stuff, so I just like carry this I'll put it in, put it in my car but this one needs to be out here too because this is my worker that's the one that goes to work with me every day I carry two Voyagers every day every day I carry two Voyagers and this is one carry this one and the XL version of this one this is the Oz 10 so this one should go like that let's raise these up here Oz 8's BD1, Oz 10, let's put this one, Oz 10, Oz 10. Okay, next up, let's go back to the old ones again. This is one of the first generation ones I've ever purchased. Oz 8. And I've always, always, always exceptionally, super, absolutely, positively, awesomely, <laughs> I can't think of any other word, but I love these handles. I've always wished somebody would make them out of G10. There has been a couple people I've seen on the internet make them out of G10, they did an excellent job, but I would like to see like a mass-produced handle 
for these. I don't know why nobody makes like um, scales for the, the Voyagers and stuff. Because if you put a nice scale on this knife, it's like super, super nice. And it also takes like a G10 or Micarta scales on this. I, would, I think I would rather have G10 though, because G10 is stronger. Just for the strength reason of it. But I've always loved these handles. These are some of my favorite handles of all time. The reason why is because I like the rear grip. It gives you a lot of extension. This is a five and a half inch blade. Now it turns into a seven and a half inch blade. Seven and a half, six to six, I think it's six inches to nine inches is what my pops used to tell me was, uh, um, what they told him when, when he was in the Marines, that was the ideal fighting knife. Size for close quarter combat. And you want a long blade because if you're in combat, you want to be able to take out your opponent. And you want a blade that's long enough to penetrate into organs and internal parts of the person's body that you can damage and take them out. So, and when, and my pops told me like when most people stab, they only use like the first three or four inches of the blade because nobody stabs all the way in. So the longer your blade is, the more likely, the, the further it's gonna stab into. So, you know, if this is a five and a half inch blade, according to what my pops used to tell me, it's like three and a half to four and a half inches it would be penetrating. I know it's kind of gruesome, but that's one reason why you might want a long blade for a self-defense knife. It's like the difference between a 44 Magnum and a, and a, and a 38. <laughs> or maybe they may be even smaller, like a, a 32 caliber. <laughs> but this would be the big caliber. This would be like a 44 Magnum or a 45 ACP or a, I don't know, it might even be a 50 cal. But this is the big boy. Absolutely love them. And these are some of the best values. To me, the Voyagers are like the best values for folding self-defense folders. Because these are real deal. These aren't like, a, uh, I know you can buy a lot of self-defense folders that aren't the real deal. I mean, they don't have real strong locks or anything. So like if you're in a, in a combat situation and, you, and your knife hit the back end of something while, you, while you're, um, you know, wrestling around or doing whatever you're doing, doing whatever you have to do to save yourself or save your loved ones, the knife like fold in on your hand and hurt you, and then that, that's the end of your combat because you just took yourself out. So you, you know, the best thing for a, a combat knife is a fixed blade, no doubt, a fixed blade. But not all of us can carry fixed blades everywhere. And so the next best thing to a fixed blade, in my opinion, is a triad folder. Nothing stronger than a triad folder. I don't believe any knife is stronger than a triad folder. I think these are the strongest. And other knives, you know, you know, sure, you know, you can you can make a really strong lock and stuff, but all these other all these other knife designs I ever see with strong locks, they're all real heavy. They make the knife super heavy. This knife doesn't weigh that much. It's a full-size knife and it doesn't weigh that much. And it's a serious fighter. This is a serious knife. This is like the next next best thing to fix blade. Eight ounces. For a knife that's this big, eight ounces for this warrior. And if I was cold steel, I would offer these in DLC coating and with G10 handle scales. Do that, cold steel. Because you don't want to give us the XL Recon 1, give us the XL Voyager. Because actually, this handle is better than the XL Recon 1. But it just needs to be made out of G10. Make one out of G10 and give it an S35VM blade, or, or, or even just use the Oz. I like the Oz10 too, so you know I don't have a problem with the Oz10. I really just want a G10 handle scale. G G10 handle scale, G10 backspacer. You know, and, and still leave it with the aluminum liners, because these with the aluminum liners they just function really nice. I don't know what it is. It's just like. All the cold steel knives that have heat treated aluminum liners, they just function really nice. Especially once they get broken in, then they're like super, super nice. As opposed to having um, the, just a G10 scale without any kind of liner. The G10, 
you can make it smooth though, you have, but you have to take it apart and you have to um, hand sand, wet sand it and polish it down until it's like smooth. Then, it, then those are then then the knife will be super smooth. That's how my um, extra large um, tower is. Uh, it's the internal uh, the inside of it's all polished, and y'all seen how smooth that one is. Same thing with the um, my uh, holdout XL holdout. You all seen how that one is. Super 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 smooth. Another knife that's my favorite though, XL Voyagers, all time favorite. I would say all time. Favorite. Okay, let me see what else we got over here. That's still a lot of Z. This is the Vaquero. Odds 8 Vaquero, the original. All of these were the original versions, the original ones when they first came to the United States and they were put on the market. These are the originals. I never used it, never car carried it. <laughs> I just collected it. This one I carried, but this one I never carried. Because at first, you know, I was trying to try out all the different blade types. And I used to have all the different blade types and the Oz 8 ones too, but all my buddies bought them. Because I had the Vaquero, I had the large Vaquero. Well, I still do have it, I still do have it. A large Vaquero. Oh, I had the um, clip blade. The blade like this on large. My, I had a friend that bought it for me. My friend Redneck. He's the one that bought it. And he uses it for deer hunting because he likes to go deer hunting. But these were the three original blade types. And they also had the three, these three blade types offered in the large size. But as you can see, I only have, these are all the, the ones I have left of my Oz 8s. But I used to have all the original blade types. That's how I originally purchased them. And I had purchased two of these because I knew I was going to carry the Tonto because I always like Tontos. The other two I just got to collect. I just wanted to have them. The reason why I like the Vaqueros is because this is Lindsey Thompson's knife. Lindsey Thompson always loved the Vaqueros. This is his, this, this is his design. This knife, all these knives are made in be with um, Lindsey Thompson and Andrew Demko. Andrew Demko and Lindsey Thompson designed all these knives. As you, as you know, the, the triad lock is Andrew Demko's invention. He's the one that brought it to cold steel. Okay, next up would be the CTS XHP ones. And the, well actually the, the first regular one was the BD, BD ones. This is a BD one right here. And this is my XL BD one. Love it. This one never got carried because I was carrying the Oz 8 one. So I didn't carry this one. I bought it to carry, but I ended up not carrying it because I decided I just wanted to keep it because I was already carrying the Oz 8. All right, the next one up that came next, excuse me, Juju. The next one up would be, oh, no, this one came next. This one came next. The Rawls, the Rawls, um, the Rawls Voyager, the Survival Voyager. This was a collector. This one has CTSXHP steel, it's DLC coated with the OD green Grivex, it's still Grivery, handle scales with all blacked out hardware. They should make these like a regular production knife. But give us, give us, give us G10 though. Let's move up from Grivex. Give us G10. This one had a 50-50 blade. This one's never been used either. This is a collector. I got this one just to collect. Because I had to have it. Because I've always wanted, I always wanted to upgrade the materials on the Voyager. And this one, the, this is the only time that they upgrade the materials on the Voyagers when, when they made collectible Voyagers. CTS XHP on a Voyager. But that's not the only one. 
You had to have the Lynn C. Thompson special. Lynn C. Thompson always carries an XL Vaquero, at least one or two of them. At least that's what he always advertises. <laughs> Whenever you see him in his videos, he always has an XL Vaquero on him. This is his, this is his design. He thinks it's the best fighter. And that's why I got it. Just because, you know, it's a Lindsey Thompson thing. All right, people. Those are, those are the, the triads. Oh, wait a minute. We got one more. One more. I'm sorry. We got one more. Got another Oz 10 one. Another one that I got just to collect. Gotta have the Chris. <laughs> the Filipino Chris. Gotta have that one. Never carried it, just collected it. Like y'all know, the only other one that I carry besides the Tonto Blade one is my, um, I call it the Filipino Baron, the XL version. And that's the one that Lucky has right now. Okay. That's how this should go. Oh, wait a minute. That's BD1. This is, uh, do, 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 do. goes like this, huh? Like that. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to show you the guy, the one that... Now, this is the way I carry my other one every day. This is my bug out bag. I'm not going to show you everything that's in my bug out bag. <laughs> But in this pocket, voila. Now these knives I call second generation Voyagers. Even though that you know they've had different generations of blade steels and things like that, and with a lot of the other Voyagers that they just made making the same model all the time, I will call those like first and second and third generation. With these, I, you know, because they're all made the same, just with different blade steels, to me it's still like a second generation. The first generation was made totally different, and we'll get into those. But first we're doing the second generation ones. And this one goes to work every day with me. Like I told y'all, these are my favorite knives. And this was one that was in my big knife drawer because I like to carry it a lot. With my snaggle tooth MF on it. All my snaggle tooth ones I like that you see on my knives, they're aluminum. Even the ones that look like they're black, you know, the black plastic ones, I don't, I don't use the black plastic ones, I only use the aluminum ones. I just like, I like metal more than I like uh, plastic. It's just me, people. Doesn't mean that this is better than the other ones, it's just that's my preference. I like, I like the, I like the feel and the look of real metal. This is my highly used one. Out of all my Voyagers that, now, that I carry nowadays, this one gets carried the most. I know I have, the, I have this one that goes always, you know, I show you how I carry on my fanny pack, but I don't carry that in my pocket. This one I carry in my pocket a lot. All right. Whenever I get on the bike or go on trips, I like to carry this one. Why? Well, one of the reasons why I like a big Voyager, other than it's a very capable knife, is because they're inexpensive. And I've had things confiscated before. Um, so, you know, like, and if I'm going to get something confiscated, I don't want it to be too expensive. You know what I mean? Especially if you go on places that you've never been and you don't know how things are there. Though that's the time when I'll carry something like a Voyager because if it gets taken away from me, it's not like a, a major loss. But I always like to have things on me that I that you know feels like it adds to my protection, you know, as a last ditch effort type tool. I hope I never have to use any of these, but I always like to have them with me. You know, I don't know, maybe I watch the news too much because I see I see crazy people all the time. <laughs> In the area that I live in, I hear shootings. I hear people shooting at each other all the time. So, you know, it doesn't happen to me, but 
you know, who knows, you know, one day you might just be in the wrong place at the wrong time and and that and me, I you know, my motto is, you know, always hope for the best, but always be prepared for the worst. And in the old days in my youth, I used to always be around crazy people. So maybe that's what got me started. So maybe I got a little bit more, higher degree of paranoia than most people. Because <laughs> I've seen a lot of crazy things in my life. I know, that, I know that there are some seriously evil people out there. People that enjoy doing evil things to other people. And that's what you got to be prepared for, people, because, you know, me, I always consider myself like a, like a sheepdog. I'm not a wolf. I'm not a predator. That's not me. I don't go around looking for people to, to victimize. I'm not a predator. I'd be more like the type that would help somebody that got victimized. That'd be more my role. But uh, you got to be aware, you know, you just got to be aware there's a lot of predators out there. And with the economy going bad in our country, there's going to be more predators. Because, you know, like in California, it's getting ridiculous with homeless people. I mean, it's like, every, you know, because people, the, the, the cost of living is so high out here. People can't afford to live out here. So even people that are like working class people can't afford to pay rent. And so they end up living in their vehicles or, or a lot of people buy motorhomes and things like that and live on the street. It, it's wild. It's wild. And like I say, every day, you know, every night I hear shootings off in the distance. And we had a major shooting down the street from my house. That was on the news and everything. So, and I live in—I live in a nice neighborhood. That's 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 what's that's, that's what's so trippy about. I don't live in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get into the old school voyagers. Let's look at the old ones. This is all the generation, the type of voyager that you can get now. Let's look at the ones you can't get. The first generation. And here's my collection of first generation ones. Let's start off with, this is the one that I carried out of all these. I just like to carry this one. The little Vaquero. And these are super lightweight, super lightweight. Let's see how much these weigh. That's one thing that was cool about these is that they didn't weigh anything. 3.1 ounces for a four inch blade Vaquero. Compared to, let's just grab one of these. This is a modern Vaquero. Four point seven ounces, or four point eight ounces. Let's say four point eight. Four point eight ounces compared to three point one, and it had the same length blade. Lindsey Thompson used to like his knives to be light, and that's what made Lindsey Thompson and. And Andrew Demko is such a great pair because Lin Andrew Demko used to like to make heavy duty things. And Lindsey Thompson was always getting them to make lighter things. So between the two of them, they made some awesome knives. But this is, this is before Demko came to, to Cold Steel. These were the Voyagers before. These are the Voyagers after Demko came to Cold Steel. At first, a lot of people didn't like these because they said the handles were too big and blocky and they thought they were too heavy. Everybody still liked these. These were, these were lockbacks also. And they, they were like a stronger than a standard lockback too. They're a very strong lockback. But if you, if you whip these out back and forth, eventually you would develop up and down blade plate just because of the nature of the type of lock. Because the blade would be slamming against the, the um, actual lock instead of slamming against the stop, stop, um, stop pin. All right, let's set these down. And get into some of these. This is the first one. Next up. Now, I've always thought these were some of the most beautiful blades that Cold Silver made for the Voyager. Were the ones that they made, the blades that they made for the first Voyagers.
Look at that blade. Isn't that blade beautiful? Hologram, hologram blade, saber, saber hologram. Beautiful blade. Look at the polish on it. And these were all made, I think they're in Japan. All these, all the old ones were pretty much made in Japan, I think. So these were ones that were made in Seiki, Japan. And this is a VG1, VG1 stainless. I don't know if you could make that out. It says VG1. This one, I think, is VG1 also. Because some of these were Oz 8. I can't remember. You know, usually when they're not marked, they're Oz 8. When they are marked VG1, that means that they're VG1. Here was the Tonto. Isn't that a beautiful size, too? See, this one just says made in Japan. doesn't say if it's VG1, so this one might be an Oz 8 one. But it could be VG1 also, though. I'm not exactly sure. I can't really remember. Beautiful blade, though. Look at that blade. Isn't that blade beautiful? How much did this one weigh? Five point four ounces. How much did the clip blade weigh? Five point two ounces. Tanto blades are usually always Tanto blade knives are usually heavier than other knives, just by the nature of the type of the blade, because the blade is heavier because it got it's thick all the way pretty much to the tip. But these are beautiful, absolutely beautiful knives. This one I carried a little bit, if I remember right. So it's a little bit looser than the other ones. All right. Let me see how we're going to do this. A lot of Voyagers, people. <laughs> Voyagers were like my first ones I started collecting. It's like the first knives I got just to collect. Well, actually, no, because I have a bunch of Italian stilettos I bought to collect, and same thing with Palisans. But I have the cold steel knives. These are the first ones I bought to collect for the Voyagers. All the ones I'm showing you right here have never been used. And this one, this one's a VG1 also. This is VG1. I think this might be a Taiwan knife, though. No, it says Japan. VG1. Lindsay Thompson, Vaquero. Voyager Vaquero. These were five inch blades, if I remember right. Let me, let me see. They weren't five and a half inches, they were five. Yeah, five inch blades. Okay, next one up. This one comes with a pouch. This one has a pouch. It was meant to be worn on your hip. And what does this one say? It just says made in Japan, so this might be an Oz 8 one. Oh, I forgot about this one. This is my gun sight. These were made just to be collectors. And it says VG1 Stainless Japan. Hollow ground with the 50-50 blade. It's actually a little bit more than 50-50. I guess it's 50-50 when you look at it, including the tip. Beautiful knife. And the last one of my old ones, It's the Vaquero Grande, the big boy. The Vaquero Grande. How grande was it? <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's do it like this, huh? 
Okay. From there. 13 inches. Just a touch over 13 inches. The blade. Six inches. So it's like the same size as a tie light. Because a tie light's got a six inch blade. I think they're 13 inches also. The Caro Grande. And how much did this, this big giant knife weigh? Six point one ounces for a knife that has a six inch blade. <laughs> and it's not a little tiny blade too. This is a, this is a, you know very intimidating looking knife. I've talked to a lot of people on the internet that have carried these all all along. Long as Colt still has been existing, this has been the knife that they like to carry. One guy was a trucker when he told me that this is his knife. Awesome blade. Carrying one of these was like carrying a XL Espada. Yeah, you know, that's, that's super badass. Okay, let me see how I'm gonna do this. One last group. I don't know if we're gonna have room for all these. This is really getting ridiculous. Let me see here. Let's do these first. Let's just start off with the smallest one first. Now we're going to get into my counterpoints real quick. This is my littlest counterpoint. I think these are all Oz8, the first ones. Yeah, this Oz8 one, it's not, doesn't have any steel markings. Oz8. Next up would be the Oz8 Collector. Yep, Oz8 Collector. You know, I got one to collect and I carried one. And the one I carried got radically modified. Because <laughs> it got messed up and I, I, I modified it. And this was the one I carried. It's all polished out. Completely polished. I carried this one a lot. It used to be one of my favorite knives at the time. I liked it because it looked like a stiletto. You know me. Next up would be the, oh, this is Oz8, right on. This is my first, my first XL um, counterpoint, the Oz8 one. Next up is, this is the Oz10. This is the one, the newest one I have, my Oz10 one. Next up would be one that I got and I messed up and then I experimented with it. I reground the blade. I turned it into a dagger. And the way it got messed up is I, I was playing with it and the tip got blunted because it hit the, hit the floor, hit a cement floor. And so this blade is shorter, it's a little bit shorter just a little bit though. It's a little bit shorter than this one. Just a little tiny bit. And last but not least, is the one I carry today. This is my BD1 one. This was, this was like the second one I got. It's been my favorite all along. It's been totally polished. This is the one I carried the most. Well people, I'm gonna end it right there because I see my batteries going out. <laughs> This must be a very long video that we just made. We went through a whole lot of knives. Let me see how many voyages. Let's just see if we can do a count real quick. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and three more. That's 21. So I got more voyages than anything so far. That's the highest count that we've had so far my, for my Cold Steel collection. For counterpoints, I got Three, six, seven, seven counterpoints. All right, people, that's it.
Hope everybody's having a great day out there. Gino's kicking it over there. Peace out, Stiletto. I'm gonna put this one out there for you guys today. Today is the 19th of October, 2022. Peace out, Stiletto.